So uh, when I say women, women working in predominantly male areas, what comes to mind for you? Is there a certain image or a certain icon that you think of? Rosie the Riveter is someone you may have been thinking of. This poster came out in 1943 and has been circulating in the United States and the whole world and impacting it ever since. Now, Rosie definitely got recognition, whether that was sarcastic or real, it was still recognition. And this was pretty much marks one of the first times that women were being recognized for their work in male dominated areas. Now, at this time, it was out of necessity as the female's male counterparts were off in war, but they were still getting recognized. And you could say that since this poster first came out, a lot has changed, but at the same time, not so much. And this is the problem I'm going to be addressing today in my presentation. And I made a documentary to address this problem, and I looked into if women really are too pretty to get their hands dirty. So there is an array of problems that can be attached to this topic. There, it's very widespread and you can't really just pinpoint it down to one thing, but I think a lot of it stems from society's unrealistic expectations for women and their beliefs and misunderstandings about women, about what women can and can't do. On the screen, I have a few listed, obviously it's not limited that to that, but there is women face obstacles so much and it's usually around a lack of respect or inappropriate comments from men or wage gap. And there's a variety of things that women have to deal with all the time and that I wanted to highlight in my video. My methodology, I, like I said, I wanted to make a video and I wanted to interview women. So I reached out to so many different people. I made lots of phone calls and lots of emails and got lots of rejections but I got four good ones and I thought these are gonna be the perfect women for my video. So I reached out to them and all the women I reached out to were on the North Shore. So I was able to go on location and the way I went about doing this was I sat down for an interview and I wanted it to be on location because I wanted to highlight them in their natural element, doing what they do in their real workplace, like so that you could get a real picture into what they do. And I wanted the interview to be pretty informal, relaxed, so that they could be comfortable and share whatever they felt comfortable sharing stories-wise. And I wanted the questions to be open-ended as well. So my target audience for this project was young women. That's a pretty broad term, right? You could mean middle schoolers, high schoolers, college age, post-grad, but all of these age groups have something in common, and it's that it's, they're all in formative years. This is time when people's brains are still forming, obviously, and it's a time when women are discovering who they are, who they want to be, what their passions are, and what they may or may not want to be pursuing. So I think my project is significant because, like I said, this is a time for my target audience when young women are hearing opinions left and right, all different things, lots of negative. You know, they're hearing, oh, you can't do that. You're not strong enough for that. You shouldn't be doing that as a man's job, you can't do it. But I wanna say, you know, you can do that. You know, you are strong enough for that. And if you're passionate about it, you should be able to pursue it and not hold, not hold yourself back from that. And I also think it's important because women who are currently working in these roles, I want their stories to be shared and I want them to know that their voices matter and that they are role, model, role model, models and they're paving a way for future generations. So I'm just going to show a few clips for you. This is Renee Hunter, and she works at the Public Works Office in Danvers as a civil engineer. You know, people are surprised when you say, I'm a civil engineer, or, you know, you're wearing work boots every day. If I have to go up into the field and meet a contractor for the first time, the first time only, really, because you just feel like they're thinking, what is this girl? 
who is this? And what does she know? You know, but it, it's something that they said or did, and it's probably just in my own head, but it's, I feel like, something that um, historically or societally, that's how we're kind of taught. So um, it's like an unconscious bias, I would say, that I'm thinking they're thinking something about we when they wake up. So it's that initial introduction that, you know, I feel like, hmm, what are they thinking? Um, and this is Officer Carrie Ramsdell. She is the Chief of Police at Entercom College. I think my father always challenged, I have a younger sister as well, challenged us as female to not be afraid to be strong, to know how to fix things, to know how to hunt, to know how to shoot shoot guns and um, and fish and do those things that are maybe non-traditional of female, but still balance that with, we can still be feminine and we can still wear dresses and we can still do all those traditional feminine things as women, but also to explore other opportunities. And I think for me, that's sort of how I got into law enforcement to say, I'm comfortable here. I'm comfortable hunting. I'm comfortable fishing. I'm not comfortable being in a male dominated field that for me, it didn't feel as intimidating when I entered law enforcement because I had already like challenged some of those stigmas. Don't be afraid to be yourself, right? Don't be afraid to be feminine and to be quirky and to, to say, I don't know that answer and to maybe not have all the answers. So don't be afraid to do that. Don't feel like you have to put on this persona to be again, a big macho um, and, and sort of take on the role of a man. We can do the job as a female. We don't have to be a man to do this job. I think my father. And uh, this is Officer Kim Diorazio, and she is a co worker of Carrie's. You're absolutely going to be dealing with males that do not want you there or that think that you can't do the job. Absolutely, you're going to battle that. So when I was at the Sheriff's Department, there were males there that were like, there shouldn't be females here, they shouldn't be working here. This is not a place for females to work, um, they can't do the job. You just do a job and you do it better than them. <laughs> I think that they are offering women a whole lot more than when I first started. Trainings, um, just an opportunity to move up. Uh, I can't say that it's easy because it's not, and it's still not easy. Um, but there's just the things that they, they're offering now, it's much more than. This is Viking Gustafsson. She has the coolest name I've ever heard in my life. And she works at a shipyard in Gloucester. Well, I got into shipyard chic right away, you know. <laughs> <laughs> At the beginning, I had a bit of a honeymoon period because people just didn't know what to make of me. And we were trying to help the little lady along. I, you know, I think I came in at kind of a, a low point and stuck it out. You know, if anybody had asked me would I be here for as long as I was, if you had asked the people who hired me if they thought that's what would happen, I don't think you would have thought that's what would happen. I could show you more, but that's all we have time for. Um, so back to the problem. Did I effectively address this problem? Well, I think in some ways I did. I think I was able to share, to have a realistic, inter um, a real, um, sorry, realistically share the positive and negative aspects um, of what these women go through on a day-to-day -day basis. And like I said, um, and also, like I said earlier, I think I was able to shed light um, on the hope for future generations. And like that was one of the things of the significance of this project. And but I think one of the biggest limitations that I had for this project was just that I was only able to interview four women and they were all on the North Shore. So I wish I was able to interview more people throughout. Um, but I was very grateful for the four women that I was able to speak with. The role of communication. This project reminded me that communication is vital. Um, one of the first things I realized when I sat down with 
all four of these women is that they are they were all exceptional communicators and that came up a lot in our interviews just saying how it's important to be able to speak clearly and to be able to be open and honest and like one of them said you know if you don't know how to do something that's okay you just have to say it and you know reach out for help um, and good communication helps relationships form and prosper and I noticed as I was watching these women interact with their coworkers, I could tell they had good relationships with the people they were working with. And I'm sure a lot of that has to do with, um, you know, how effectively they communicate and talk with other people around them. What I learned about myself, um, I learned that I'm not confident at all. <laughs> and um, I learned that I need to trust myself more and my abilities and that it's okay to make mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes on, along the way, but I learned from them. And asking for help is difficult for me, but I know it's really important. And I asked for so much help from so many different people for this project, and I don't regret doing that because it helped. Implications as a follower of Christ. So as a Christian, I try to weave my faith into everything I do. And uh, as I was reflecting back on this project, a word that kept coming to mind was encouragement, and I think as Christians we're called to encourage others. And the first part of Hebrews 10.24 says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Um, so this really runs true to me for this presentation, and in this project in general, and this problem that I was addressing, women working in male areas, I think what I learned, what made these women successful and helped them be where they are today, is that encouragement that they give one another, that they give and receive from one another, and those relationships and support systems that they have. And I think that's one of the simplest ways to tackle this problem is just being there for each other and encouraging one another and building each other up. And even the four women that I interviewed, they were so encouraging to me. They could tell I was like kind of not very confident. And they were like, oh my gosh, you're gonna do so good with this. Like. One of them even like gave me her number and was like, oh, text me if you need any help or like offering for just lots of ways to help me. So I was so grateful, grateful for that. And I definitely saw encouragement through that. So these four women were not afraid to put in the work. And if they got their hands dirty along the way, then all the more power to them. Thank you.